Welcome to another video of Capital Budgeting. Now we have seen multiple methods to evaluate projects for inclusion into the capital budgets. So I thought that it would be worthwhile to put together all these methods together in one video. So let's look at all of these methods in short. So the first one we look at is payback period. The payback period is defined as the number of years required to recover a project's cost. So let's consider this cash flow 0, 1, 2, 3 minus 1000. So this is the cash outflow 500, 300, 200. So basically in this cash flow, we have the investment outlay as 1000 rupees and then we have the cash inflows. So the payback period helps in determining within how many years of the cash inflows will we be able to recover the 1000 rupees of cash outflow. Now, if the cash flows are such that the cash inflows are even, that is, it is the same amount, then the payback can be found out using the formula original investment divided by the periodic cash flow. However, if the cash inflows are not even, or in other words, it is like shown in the example here, then the payback period can be found out using the formula duration before full recovery plus unrecovered cost at the start of the period divided by cash flow during that period. So basically we will try to find out in this cash flow whether the payback will be at this point here or this point here or this point here and so on. Now the second method we look at is the discounted payback period. So this method is similar to the regular payback period method. However, in this method, the time value of money is taken into consideration. So the cash flows are first discounted at the cost of capital. And then we find out within how many years the investments will be recovered. So basically, if you take the same cash flow or the same project, as above 0 1 2 3 minus 1000 500 300 200 so 
in the discounted payback period method, we'll first find the discounted cash flow. So let's say the cost of capital is 10%. So here we'll find out what will be the value of this 500 rupees when discounted at 10%. What will be the value of this 300 rupees and what will be the value of this 200 rupees and then we'll use the same formula for the regular payback to find the payback period. The third method that we'll look at is the net present value or NPV. So let me draw the cash flow, 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1000, 500, 300, 200. So as the name suggests, we have to first find out the present value of all the cash flows, whether it is outflow or inflow. And then we have to net all of them up that means we have to sum all of them up. The cash outflows are considered negative while the inflows are considered positive for the summing up of the present values. So let's say the present value of the cash outlay here is considered PV0. For 500 rupees, let's say the present value is PV1, for 300, let's say it is PV2, and for 200, it is PV3. So basically, NPV will be equal to minus PV0, I mean if you consider PV0 as 1000, then minus PV0 will make it minus 1000 plus PV1 plus PV2 plus PV3. So obviously if the net present value comes out as positive, that means greater than zero, then what it means is the cash inflows are more than the cash outflow. Whereas if the NPV comes out negative, then the cash outflow is more than the cash inflow. So the project should be accepted if the net present value is positive. The next method is the internal rate of return or IRR. Now this is defined as the discount rate that forces a project's NPV to equal zero. So in the NPV method, we'll take the discounting rate as the cost of capital, which we can denote as K. So this is cost of capital. However, when we are trying to find the internal rate of return, basically we have to find the net present value by discounting the cash inflows and the rate at which the sum of the present values of the cash inflows becomes equal to the sum of the cash outflows is the IRR. In other words, 
at IRR NPV is equal to 0 therefore 0 now NPV is equal to minus PV0 plus PV1 plus PV2 plus PV3 so PV0 plus PV1 plus PV2 plus PV3 so here 1000 is already in terms of its present value so minus 1000 plus PV1 will become now we know the formula PV is equal to future value divided by 1 plus i to the power n here i is the internal rate of return so future value is 500 divided by 1 plus r to the power 1 plus 300 divided by 1 plus r square plus 200 divided by 1 plus r cube and we have to find the value of r such that this becomes equal to 0. Now the same thing can also be written as 1000 is equal to this portion here. So what this means is the present value of the cash outflows is equal to the present value of the cash inflows at IRR. So this is the rate of return which the project's cash inflows are giving. So if this rate of return is more than the cost of capital or in other words if this rate of return is more than the let's say interest that we have to pay for borrowing the money to fund this project then the project should be accepted. Now the next method is the modified internal rate of return also known as MIRR. Now MIRR involves finding out the terminal value of the cash inflows. So we have to find out the terminal value of the cash inflows. Let's say this is FV1, FV2, FV3. This is compounded at the firm's cost of capital. So this is done at the cost of capital. And when you add all these future values, you get the terminal value for the cash inflows. Then finding out the present value of the cash outflows. So here we already have the present value of the cash outflow. However, let's say if there was another cash outflow somewhere during the fourth year, then that has to be brought to it the present value and the discounting for the cash outflow will also be done at the cost of capital. And then we have to determine the discount rate that forces the present value of this terminal value to equal the present value of the cash outflows. And this rate will be MIRR. So MIRR is the rate at which the present value of the cash outflows becomes equal to the present value of the terminal value of cash inflows. The next method which we look at is profitability index. Profitability index is defined as the ratio of the present value of cash inflows to the initial investment outlay. So PI is equal to 
the ratio of present value of cash inflows to the initial investment outlay. So let's consider the same project 0, 1, 2, 3 minus 1000, 500, 300, 200. So we have to find the present value of these cash inflows. Let's say these are PV1, PV2, PV3. So let's say these total up to PVA. So this is the present value of cash inflows. And then the initial investment outlay is this. Let's say this is PV0. So basically, the profitability index will be equal to PV4 divided by PV0. Note that in this formula, we are using initial investment outlay. So only the initial investment. Sometimes people also use average investment. Now profitability index is also known as the benefit to cost ratio because the present value of cash inflows represents the benefits, whereas the initial investment outlay represents the costs. So the acceptance rule is that if the profitability index is greater than one, then we should accept the project because that means the benefits are more than the costs. The next method that we look at is accounting rate of return or ARR. ARR does not consider cash flows, but considers the accounting information as revealed by financial statements in order to measure the profitability of an investment. So ARR is the average income. Now this is the income after depreciation and taxes divided by the average investment multiplied by 100. So the acceptance rule for ARR is that the management has to establish the minimum rate which is acceptable for the organization and if the ARR is higher than that minimum rate then the project should be accepted and if it is not, then it should be rejected. So these are the seven methods that we have looked at in this chapter. The detailed explanation for each of these methods is given in the individual videos for these methods.